we're also going to do uh, a rather difficult last example that we've got here. I can come back to this slide at the end if you need me to. And this is one that I've said is really, really for people that are aiming for the top, top grades. If you're, uh, if you're going to find this difficult, it might be worth you just spending some time looking at some of the other examples now and just doing a bit of practice because we've got about 15 minutes to do this example. So it says here, by noting that 3a equals 2a plus a, show that sine 3a equals 3 sine a minus 4 sine cubed a. So this is going to be a question that uses both the addition formulae and the double angle formulae. And it says, by noting this thing. So sine of 3a, we are going to instead do the sine of 2a plus a. They've asked us to use that that we've got there. And now I'm going to try and do the addition formula to this. Saria, do you think you could tell me what the addition formula would be with the sine and cos with this? Mm. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, so it would start off sine of the first one, cos of the second one. Will it be plus or minus for this with sine? It will be plus. And then we're going to switch them. So instead of it being sine 2a, cos a, it will be cos 2a, sine a. OK, so you do know it. Now we want to go further, because look at what they want us to do. They want us to say that sine of 3a, they only want the argument to be in terms of a. So I've done the addition formula. What's next? Good. I'm going to replace it with the double angle formula for sine 2a. Now, sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a. Don't forget, you've still got a cos a coming afterwards. What do you think I'm going to replace cos 2a with? There's a choice, remember? 1 minus 2 sine squared a. Good. Haroon said 1 minus 2 sine squared a is the best one, because then I'm aiming for the question to all be in terms of sine. So it's best to use the one that's all in terms of, of sine. So that's going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared a multiplied by sine a. So I'm going to spend a bit of time doing some simplifying now. That will be 2 sine a cos squared a, just from that first bit being simplified. And then I'm going to expand the brackets. So I've got sine a times 1, which is just sine a. And then I've got sine a times minus 2 sine squared a. That's minus 2 sine cubed a. And I'm really nearly there, but I'm just not quite there. What's the problem with the thing I've got written versus the thing I want? There's a, there's a cos there's a cos squared a, and that's the thing that's kind of getting in the way of making mine looking all purely in terms of sine. So I need to get rid of cos squared a. What's cos squared a equal to? Excellent. Cos squared a is 1 minus sine squared a. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say I've got 2 sine a multiplied by, whoops, 1 minus sine squared a plus sine a minus 2 sine cubed a. It looks complex, but it's not. Well, it is. But it is. It's, not, it's not as crazy as it looks. It's just expanding and factorizing. So I'm going to keep expanding. So that is 2 sine a minus 2 sine cubed a plus sine a minus 2 sine cubed a, which simplifies to 3 sine a minus 4 sine cubed a. So we have 3 sine a minus 4 sine cubed a. So this is testing your knowledge of the addition formulae and the double angle formulae and your knowledge of the Pythagorean identity. And the way we, we go about this is saying, OK, well, my argument here is 3a. In the answer, I want the argument only to be a. The other thing is that the answer only has sine. So any time we had a cos squared, we replaced it with something that we already knew. So you think about what it looks like, and you try and purify or make the thing that you've got into exactly what you want it to look like. So that was part A. Now, part B of the question starts with this word that is always really, really useful for us. It says, hence. Remind me, what does hence mean? Using the answer that you have just done, solve this equation that we've got here. So we've got 16 sine cubed theta minus 12 sine theta 
minus 2 root 3 equals 0. Well, that's meant to look like something that we've just got on the previous bit. But I don't know exactly if you think this looks similar. Can you see any bits that look similar, but they are slightly different? Um, What's sim? The sine yeah, we've got this sine cubed theta and this sine theta. And we've also got that over here. But I want to know the two things that are different about it. It's been negated. Because instead of it going that one and then cubed, it's got cubed and then that one, so it's been negated. And what else is different? How much, Hannah? We, that, we, that's also something else. It is, I think it's four times bigger. When we compare the cubed bit, I think it's four times bigger. So I'm going to go to this statement that I've got here, which is that sine 3a, I'm not going to do it with 3a for a second. I'm actually going to say sine 3x. Oh, theta, because that's what the question is. Sorry, guys. Sine 3 theta is 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta. And I'm going to negate everything so that I get minus sine 3 theta equals, if I negate this, that switches it round like this. And then Hannah said also to multiply it by 4. So if I multiply it by 4, I then get this statement, which means I can replace the yellow highlighted bit here with this green highlighted bit here. Oh, yes, thank you. I didn't multiply everything there carefully. So I negated, and then I multiplied by 4. The reason I negated and multiplied by 4 was to try and make the thing that I had here in yellow look like the thing I'd just been working on. Otherwise, how else was I going to solve this equation? Because it doesn't look like a nice equation to try and solve. So I can now replace that whole yellow section with this thing I've written in green. So that's minus 4 sine 3 theta minus 2 root 3. I've replaced the yellow, so I've still got the minus 2 root 3 equals 0. And that's just a nice equation to solve. So that would be uh, minus 2 root 3 equals 4 sine 3 theta. So that is dividing it by 4, which is minus root 3 over 2 is sine 3 theta. I'm not going to finish solving the entire equation for this. But let's just talk about some of the things we would need to do here. The range. the range needs to change. So at the moment, the range is between 0 and 2 pi. So if it's 3 theta, it would need to be between 0 and 6 pi. I said I'm not going to solve it. I probably am going to solve it, aren't I? <laughs> so we're going to do the inverse sine of minus root 3 over 2, which is negative 60. So that means that 3 theta is negative 60 degrees. Oh, it's, it's in radians. Silly me, which is minus pi over 3. So that was just doing the inverse sine of minus root 3 over 2. How do you find the other one for sine? You do pi minus that. So you've got pi minus minus pi over 3, which is 1 minus minus a third. 1 and a third, which is... 4 pi over 3. And I've written them like this because I'm going to find all of my next ones by passing 2, 2 pi to all of them. So I've got minus a third, and I'm going to add 2 pi. I'm going to add 2, so that's 5 over 3 pi. I'm going to add on another 2 pi, so I get 11 over 3 pi. If I add on another pi, I get 17 over 3 pi. And 17 over 3 is less than 6 pi. If I go again, I go over. I get to 7 and 2 thirds, which is bigger. I'm going to do the same on the bottom here. So that's 4 thirds. I'm going to add on 2, so I get 10 thirds. I'm going to add on 2 again, so I get 16 thirds. If I add on 2 again, I get 22 thirds, which is bigger than 6 pi. 
So there's one of these solutions that is not inside the range. This one, I'm not going to include it. All I need to do to finish the question is to divide all of these answers by three. So what will all the answers, what will change about the answers? They'll all be over nine instead of over three. So my answers, if I put them in order, I've got four pi over nine, five pi over nine. Then I've got 10 pi over nine, 11 pi over nine, 16 pi over nine, and 17 pi over 9. And all of those are in between 0 and 2 pi. Why are there six solutions rather than the usual two? Good, because the graph has been compressed by a factor of 3, or scaled by a factor of a third. So that's definitely a lot harder question, but I need you to see how hard these can actually be. And you'll have noticed at the top, I think I wrote, this actually came up in an exam like, just like this before. So when you, t when, when you say stuff to me, like, I want to see more exam questions, I am showing you lots of exam questions. These are things that come up in exams. They're, just, they're not in exactly the same font. That's the only thing. Yes? How did you get the minus 2 over 3? How did I get the minus 2 over 3? Where? Minus 4 times 3 to the minus 2 over 3. Because if you look back at the equation, the yellow thing we replaced with minus 4 sine 3 theta, but there was still a minus 2 root 3. So it's still got the minus 2 root. I was just literally trying to solve this equation by replacing this with minus 4 sine 3 theta. OK? So I'm going to set quite a lot of homework on this, because there's lots of practice that needs to be done. And I don't think people have been working as hard on this as they could be. I think this is a challenging topic, and I think more hours need to go into it.